Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue looking at some circular motion. Um, so we've looked at example of an object tethered to a string going around a circular path after being hit with a bat. Uh, now we're going to look at a car traveling along the ground but on a banked piece of road. Okay, so this will cover I think 5.3 in your textbook. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, circular motion on banked curves. So, in the case of a car traveling around a curve on a flat piece of road, so what the heck? So let me draw a flat piece of road here, okay? And there's like a roundabout, and the roundabout goes around like that. And so you're looking at the car from behind, okay? So there's some tail lights. I suck at drawing. There's your car, okay? And the car's going to go around like that. So it's going sort of into the into the page and around to the right, okay? So that's a flat piece of road. And because it's going to start going in circular motion, there must be some net force acting towards the center, okay? Centripetal force. Now, because it's on a flat piece of road, the normal force and the gravitational force will cancel each, each other out, so they're irrelevant. So we don't have to worry about them. The only force really, well, a little bit of the normal force is providing some, but most of the force, and we consider this the only force when we do these questions, the force that's providing this net force towards the center is the friction between the tires and the road, okay? So friction is what provides the force necessary to keep this car in circular motion on a flat piece of road as it's going around a, a curve, okay? Now let's consider the case where we've got a car traveling on a banked piece of road, okay? So banked just means that the road uh, is elevated at some angle to the horizontal. And then your car is still going in this picture here, it's still going sort of into the page and around to the right like that, okay? Um, what this allows cars and uh, cyclists and things like that to do is it allows them to take the corner uh, at such a speed so that there is no friction acting on the object to keep it in circular motion, okay? Because you'll notice that now the normal force is pointed at an angle. That means if I blow this up here a little bit and I say, okay, here's gravity, here's normal force, then there's gotta be some horizontal component of that normal force, which is the component that is contributing to the net force uh, towards the center of the circle of this circular path, okay? So a banked curve just allows the car to take the curve at a greater speed because it doesn't have to rely on friction so much to keep it in circular motion, okay? It can take the curve without any friction at all, all right? And all of that centripetal force, that net force, is being provided by the horizontal component of the normal force instead, instead of friction, okay? Um, so that's what's going on here, okay? The net force is being provided now by the horizontal component of the normal force and not by friction. When a car or a cyclist or an object is able to do this, it's able to take this corner without the use of friction we say that this object is traveling at the design speed of the track, okay? If the object was moving a little bit quicker than the design speed, then friction would need to act downwards to keep the car from slipping up and out of the bank. If the car was traveling slightly lower than the design speed, then friction would have to act upwards let me just rub this out. Friction would have to act, whoops. Friction would have to act this way to keep the slow moving car from just sliding down the hill. Okay, so there's this very special speed at which no friction is needed to keep that car in circular motion. It is completely provided by the horizontal component of the normal force. That speed is called the design speed. Okay. So it's traveling around the bend without the aid of friction, all right? 
Now, we've got a way to actually calculate what this design speed is if we know a few things. We've got to know the angle here and we've got to know the mass of the car. Okay, so here's a blown up version of the forces acting on the car and the forces, it's a bit of a weird picture, but all that's going on there is the forces being added vectorially. Okay, and when you add every single possible force acting on something vectorially, tip to tail, uh, you end up with the net force acting on the object. Okay. If you don't like that picture, just treat it like this. Here's the horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical component of the normal force. Here is the horizontal component. It's just saying that the net force is equal to the horizontal component of the normal force, okay? We can actually work out what that component is, okay? So let's talk about, first of all, how this vertical component of normal force is related to gravity. You'll notice that they're equal because the net force has no vertical component. So what we can say is that this component here, let me just rub these circles out so that it's a bit less confusing. Okay, so the hor uh, vertical component, which if that angle is theta here, then this must be theta. This would be Fn cos theta. We know that this component, Fn cos theta, must be equal to Fg, okay? That's what this is saying here, all right? Because there is no net force in the vertical direction. This component here, normal force sine theta, that is what is providing our net force. It is just the net force if it's traveling at the design speed. There's no other forces acting to give it some net force, okay? So that's what that is saying here. The net force is simply just equal to the sum of the horizontal forces, which in this case is only this horizontal component of the normal force. Now, if I substitute this equation here into there for the normal force, so if I rearrange this and get Fn equals Fg cos theta, oh, sorry, over cos theta, substitute this into there, we end up with this nice little formula here, telling us that the net force is simply equal to gravitational force times tan theta. Very similar to how we had that net force equation shortcut for an object tethered to a string. Okay, and we can also work out the acceleration by dividing net force by mass. That'll cancel the m, giving us g tan theta. And you can work out, um, if we make that equal to mb squared on r, you can rearrange for v, solve, and you get that expression there, okay? But what's really important is this is only relevant for objects traveling at the design speed. If you're not traveling at the design speed on a banked curve, then there'll be a component of friction involved, and so this formula needs to be slightly modified for the net force, okay? That's an extension thing. I've never seen a question like that being asked in the U12 exam. Um, we're gonna go through it in a video anyway, later on, but I, I'm saying I've never seen it in an exam before. Pretty much every single question I've seen involves a car traveling at design speed, okay? Anyway, let's do a question. So a curved section of the track on an Olympic velodrome has radius of 40 meters and is banked at an angle of 37 degrees to the horizontal. A cyclist of mass 80 kilograms is riding on this section of track at the design speed. Okay, so it's at the design speed, there's no friction. Calculate the net force acting on the cyclist. Okay, so let's draw a picture quickly. There's your cyclist, he's traveling into the page and around like that, okay? This angle here is 37. Forces, gravity, normal force, okay? Net force, because this object is traveling in a horizontal circle around like this, the net force must be that way, okay? So set up your coordinate system to the right is positive because that's where net force is pointing. Analyze, okay? Well, we know from the previous slide that the vertical component of the norm, whoa, what happened there? Give me one second, sorry. Stupid thing. Okay, so we know that the vertical component of the normal force must be equal to gravity. And that's what we were saying before in the previous slide, Fn, uh, that would be, so that would be Fn cos 37 equals Fg, or Fn equals Fg over cos 37, 
Okay, this is from the previous slide. All I'm saying here is that the angle is um, 37 degrees. Okay, we also know that the net force is completely provided by the horizontal component of the normal. That is Fn sine theta. So therefore, net force is equal to Fn sine 37. We know Fn is equal to this, so substitute, get Fg tan theta, and sorry, I'll replace the theta with 37. There we go. Fg, well, we can work that out. We know the mass of the cyclist. It is 80. G is 9.8. Tan, 37. And we get an answer of, where am I? 591 newtons, okay? So we worked it out again using the forces and analyzing you know, what adds up to zero and what gives you unit force, but really you could have just used these, okay? Net force is equal to Fg tan theta, and that's exactly what we got in the very last step here, okay? Part B says calculate the design speed, okay? We're just gonna use the shortcut. Okay, use the shortcut. We've got an object on a banked track traveling at design speed. Velocity is given by this. Okay, design, that is the design speed. V equals whatever. Okay, so just copy that over. That was A. B. V equals square root G R tan theta. All right, G is 9.8. R says the radius is 40 meters. Just keep in mind meters, kilograms, and seconds every time you do a problem. And you get a design speed of 17.2 meters per second, okay? So we need to travel at 17.2 meters per second, no more, no less, if you want to go around this circle without the aid of friction, okay? That's what the design speed is. Okay, we'll stop there. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at an extension of this. So traveling at greater than or less than the design speed and how friction gets involved. You can skip that if you want. That is optional. We're not going to do any questions of that in class. Um, and I am 99% sure you will not get a question like that on an exam. Okay, so it is optional. It is kind of an extension. Watch it if you want. Otherwise, see you in the next video after that.